again uh, brothers and sisters this is the gospel sound as kindling reformation and ministry kenya and uh, this is uh, sammy wilberforce this is a ministry which is geared towards the spreading of the three angels around the world and uh, i welcome you to this presentation number 16 in the Lateran series, the presentation, the bride. Let us pray. Father, thou that art everlasting in love, we come before thee, and that we want to hear what the Spirit speaks unto the churches, and even what you have to speak to us at this point. And so, lead us, Lord, and guide us, and as we share in thy word, May the angels which excel in strength and which are able to direct our minds direct us at this point. Let the omnipresence of thy spirit guide our speech, our thoughts, and our will that, uh, Father, we may speak of thee and thy son alone and not of self. Your name be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We have been uh, doing the series, uh, The Latter Rain. It has 21 parts, and uh, today we are on number 16. Just a few more to go. We are remaining with the uh, 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 with the presentation. What is Seventh Day Adventism? This, this is this will be interesting when we reach at it. It is the next presentation. Then uh, we'll be looking at the Ten Virgins, and then the Universal Death Decree. Then a bit. Uh, a brief outline of the sanctuary service then the last message of mercy that is covering Isaiah chapter 58 and so the, the remaining uh, uh, five presentation will go through some intensive uh, uh, information we shall go through some minute things that bring out this latter in series to it is a uh, climax uh, from number one to number five, we just laid a foundation of the latter rain series, and then we try to uh, crack in some few things in the middle of it from presentation number uh, six to fifteen. And now we come to the gist of the match matter uh, when we will be dealing with the uh, seventeen to twenty-one, bringing all the things we have uh, talked together so that clearly the light may be brought forth the light that shines in the word of god and so welcome to our number 16 presentation uh the the bride the bride and uh, i know the lord will help us and uh, he'll continue guiding us as we seek him uh, in everything that we do if we put him at the forefront uh, then we know that when we seek him, he, he shall be uh, found by us. And so, uh, the issue of uh, the bride, where is the right place we can start this if uh, it is not in the book of Revelation chapter 19 revelation chapter 19 which speaks about the 
the bride or the wife of uh, uh, the lamb. And so Revelation chapter 19 from verses 7 <coughs> to verses 9. Verses 7 to verses 9. This is what the word of the Lord says. Uh, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are true sayings of God. And so, for the church to be the pure bride and the wife of the Lamb, they have to be clothed in fine linen. They have to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. And fine linen is the righteousness of Christ, or the righteousness of the saints given by Christ himself. For those who have uh, uh, been able to marry and uh, go through the wedding, the, the the, the man provides the wedding gown for the wife and you wouldn't want your wife to come to the wedding with another man's gown how will you feel if the person you are marrying today appeared on the wedding day that morning where you have to be enjoined to be husband and wife wearing the clothing that you didn't buy for her to wear on that day. So this wife or the bride of the bridegroom, the wife of the lamb, has to wear fine linen, the righteousness of the saints, which is provided by Christ himself. How do you say that the garment of the wife is given by the bridegroom himself? You read that in Isaiah uh, 61 verses 10 and 11. I'll greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with a robe of righteousness. So that fine linen that is the righteousness of the saints, it is a robe provided by the Lord himself. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord will cause righteousness. The Lord himself will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. And so the garment is provided by none other than Christ himself or the bridegroom. Every single uh, man preparing to marry should know that the garment is provided by the man and it's not the wife's duty to come up with uh, uh, the garment. And so the analogy uh, of marriage is the symbolism of uh, Christ and his church and uh, uh, that is what we get there. And so uh, when we are talking about the bride, we know that the garment cometh from uh, the person who is marrying the bride. And so, since Christ entered into the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary, he is to be married to his church. You read verses like Daniel chapter 7 verse 13, Daniel chapter 8 verse 14, and Revelation 19, 7 and 8. And then uh, uh, let us read Revelation chapter 21 verse 9 Revelation 21 verse 9 let us see what it says this is what the word of the Lord uh, speaks unto us concerning the bride it says and there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of seven last plagues and talked with me saying come hither I'll show thee the bride of 
the lamb and what he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city the holy jerusalem ascend, descending out of heaven from god having the glory of god and her light was like unto a stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear as crystal and her wall great and high and the city is described uh, uh, how it is and then we are told uh, that uh, uh, this is this new Jerusalem is the wife of the lamb and yet we saw in uh, 19 uh, chapter 19 that um, the marriage of the lamb had come and the wife was already ready and to her she was arrayed in fine linen and the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and so you ask do we have two brides the church and uh, or the people and the city no we shall come to that how that plays in uh, the whole theme of atonement is for christ to make the bride ready the husband to be sure it is like in a, a courtship where actually everything has to be determined that the one that you are enjoying in is a person who is worthy to be called your wife. And uh, Ephesians chapter 25, Ephesians chapter 5 verses 25 and 27. Look at this, Ephesians 5. 25 and 27 it says husband love your wife even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might present it to the, himself a glorious church this is the bride not having spot or wrinkle or any such a thing but it should be holy and without blemish so speaking about marriage he speaks about the church the glorious church which is the bride of christ and how should it be it should be holy and glorious without spot or wrinkle and that is the kind of the bride that Christ is actually coming for the church of Christ is the true holy city by the way how do you prove that revelation 11:2 let us look at it revelation 11:2 it says but the court which is without the temple, live out and measure it not, for it is given to the unto the gentiles, and the holy sheet shall they tread uh, underfoot forty and two months. When you read verse one, it says, And they are given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. So the temple itself, the church plus the other them that comes therein. Uh, is what is called the bride of Jesus Christ the bride of Jesus Christ and she has to be adorned in the righteousness of Jesus Christ without any spot or ring on so even now every child of God is a part of the new Jerusalem and his and her name is inscribed there he is he or she is longer is no longer a citizen of the earth but he has translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Everyone who purifies himself and washes and remedies the defect in their characters, they form part of the church of God. They form part of the church of God. Look at uh, Colossian, uh, Colossians chapter 1 verses 13. Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 we are talking about the bride and speaking about the father who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son so it is the work of the father in giving his son that he makes us the saints partakers of the inheritance and then we pass from darkness and are translated into uh, into the kingdom of his dear son and when this uh, happens we are told that uh, 
uh, we are told in uh, the book of uh, Galatians chapter 4 verses 26 that but for Jerusalem which is free is the mother of us all. So those people who make up the church of God are free, are free from what? They are free from condemnation and the sins of this world. We become citizens of New Jerusalem. Thus, Christ's marriage in the most holy place refers to the reception of his church, his people, in an eternal union with him. When we dimly realize something of Christ's unspeakable love for his church, we may appreciate with what earnestness, what infinite longing the heavenly bridegroom waits for the consummation of the blessed union with his church in the most holy place. And uh, when you look at um, the book of First uh, uh, John, the book of First John, chapter one, chapter three, verse one and two. Let me just put it here, as we are talking about the bride. First John, three, one and two. Behold. I'll read from verses 1 to 3. We are talking about the bride. This is the number 16 in the series, The Latter Rain, series presented to you by Sam Wilberforce. Uh, the ministry is uh, Gospel Sounders Rekindling Reformation Ministries. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but when we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every one man that hath this hope in him purifies himself as even he is pure. So the bride has to be pure. It has to be purified. It has to be wholly sanctified unto the Lord, and nothing that defiles should be in the bride it should be just as pure as the bridegroom and so he said that we do not know how we shall be when he appears but we shall be like him how shall we be like him what does it mean that we shall be like him colossians uh, 3 verses 14 colossians uh, 3 verses uh, verses 4 so Colossians 3, verses 4, and uh, I'll start verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in him. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So, uh, first, John, uh, first John says, that um, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but when he appears, we, sh we shall see him as he is. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And what? how shall he appear? He shall appear in a glorious state. When Christ appears, who is our life, then he shall appear in glory, and we shall appear with him in glory so the church of god must be purified and look like him and uh, when uh, you read the book of jeremiah talking about this um, bride talking about this bride in i uh, in jeremiah chapter 50 verses 20 uh, if I'm not wrong. In those days and at that time, said the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I'll pardon them whom I reserve. So the bride will just look like the bridegroom. And so this is what the prophet says uh, in uh, 7 BC 985 to 986. The church is the bride the lamb's wife every true believer is part of the body of christ 
the church is the bride, the lamb's wife. If she understood this, she would be all glorious within. Glorious within. You see this verse in Jeremiah, brothers and sisters. In those days and in that time, said the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and they shall be none, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I'll pardon them whom I reserve. And the prophet tells of the Laodicean church says, the church is the bride, the lamb's wife. If she understood this, she will be all glorious within. That is what Christ is calling us unto. Pure perfection, pure uh, 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 life undefiled, clothed with the garments of righteousness. And uh, uh, I just want to bring another verse on the screen, Isaiah. It should be 26, verses 3, if I'm not wrong. Let us start from verse 1 to verses 4. This is the presentation, the bride. It says that uh, in that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city, salvation with God appointed for uh, walls and bulwarks. Open ye gates that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. So the bride keepeth the truth that that is why she can be able to enter through the gates. And then thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. So the strength of the bride is in Jehovah, the Lord. And that is why she is a nation, a righteous nation, which keepeth the uh, truth that we may all be able to enter in. We may be able to enter in. And so, uh, I, I just pray that uh, we, we may be able to behold and we may be able to see these things. And uh, we may appreciate what... Uh, Christ is doing in the heavenly sanctuary. We as the members of the Church of Christ are individually to be married to Christ in an eternal union. The Church is merely made up of individuals who are to be partakers of His blessed union with Christ in the most holy place. In the most holy place. Christ has promised that if faithful, He will write upon as His Father's name and His uh, own name and the name of New Jerusalem symbolizing marriage to him in that we take his name. When we are enjoined to Christ, we join him in his name and that he will belong to his, we will belong to his household, never more to go out. By the marriage is represented the union of humanity with divinity. And so Christ is seeking us daily uh, to be united with him to put away our imperfection as it is written in uh, second peter 1 4 uh, let us look at it in second peter second peter uh, 1 4 second peter 1 4 it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we must be partakers of the divine nature so that we may be clothed with the garments of righteousness and we may be part of the bride. And so the work of atonement, as I said in the beginning, is the work of making us holy and acceptable to the Lord. It is Christ himself who prepares his church. So that inside it may be clean. And in uh, Revelation chapter 3, we are told that, uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. In Revelation 3, 20, Christ is waiting for his bride, the church, to be ready. And when it is ready, he will come and claim it as his own. He must gather them and put them in a garner. And as the midnight cry is made, behold, the bridegroom come, cometh, go ye and meet him. 
we 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 may not fall in the category of uh, the foolish virgin but um, the wise virgin satan has been seeking always to hide the truth that uh, christ is able to have a perfect bride and he has lulled the church that we shall be saved in sin but christ is not coming to take a sinful church christ is coming to take a people who are holy and are consecrated to him those who have kept their lamps trimmed and burning those who have confidence firm until the end and are awake during the whole period of the third angel's message when it is proclaimed in power and participate in it fully will make up the bride of the of the lamb and the glory of the lord shall shine upon it and it shall arise in full strength at his, as it is in isaiah chapter uh, chapter 60 and uh, revelation chapter 18 and then the world will be able to know who follows after christ and so uh something in uh, lhu 266.1 lift him up uh, this is LHU 266.1 it says we are to reflect the character of Jesus everywhere whether in the church at our homes or in social intercourse with our neighbors we should let the lovely image of Jesus appear this we cannot do unless we are filled with his fullness if we will come if we will become better acquainted with Jesus we should love him for his goodness and excellence and we should desire to become so assimilated to his divine character that all will know that we have been with Jesus and learned of him so the bride of the uh, of the lamb must reflect Christ himself who is the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world and in our family and in uh, the people that we interact with they may know that really these people have met Christ and so the shaking must happen so that the church of God must be purified the lukewarmness removed and uh, the sifting might happen so that the children of God the wheat may be separated from the tears the foolish from the the foolish from the wise the foolish from the wise and then uh, Christ will be able to come and take his people so in 1844 Christ entered in the heavenly sanctuary to finish the work and right now we know that the work is being finished and then when the number is made up uh, the Lord will come and uh, take him for his own he will come and take him as his own people and so how do you use best the time that we are remaining in with by purifying ourselves by examining our characters by looking at ourselves inside out and see if we are in Christ or we are not in Christ otherwise may the good Lord continue blessing us and may the good Lord keep us so that when he comes he may find a people who are already purified for uh, his kingdom may the good lord bless you and keep you until we meet may the lord bless you let us pray heavenly father we thank you for everything and we pray that you continue being with us as we continue learning and we may grow in thee in every step we make that you may be seen in our life it is in jesus christ's name we pray Amen.